Warning, this video and all other videos on this channel are for entertainment purposes only. The content of this video and all other videos on this channel are the opinions of the creator only and do not constitute legal, trading, investment, or financial advice of any kind. Investing carries a high level of risk and the majority of retail clients lose money. Do not invest in capital unless you understand the risk and you are prepared to lose it all. All right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and this is the weekend's deep dive. So in case you're new here, what we like to do is outline the base case hypothesis and then check in on it once a week and make sure everything's still going according to plan. If it is, then happy days. I can remain confident in my assessment and in my posture and across the markets. And if things start to invalidate, I want to know in the first instance so that I can start to reassess so that I can make sure I maintain a posture that is on the correct side. Just before we get into today's episode, you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg, as Mobster points out here. We've got riots, and the Camel Crew has known for a long time, right? Right around the time of the Olympics, we're expecting this kind of thing to ramp up. As these calls have started to come to fruition, a lot of people have been messaging me and saying, how do you know? How do you do this? How do you do this? How can I do this? Where can I look to learn how to do this stuff as well? And the analogy I want to use here is Bitcoin, okay? If we try to understand Bitcoin... It's one thing to read the protocol. It's another thing to look at the chart and say, okay, chart goes up, number goes up over time. Maybe I should have some Bitcoin. But to truly understand Bitcoin, we need all these pockets of knowledge, okay? We need to know about central banking. We need to know about inflation. We need to know about geopolitical uncertainties. We need to know about game theory. We need to know about the difference between how a developed economic country might use Bitcoin to store value, for example, and to protect against inflation versus how a developing nation might use it because they don't really have access to banking. And so, of course, this list goes on and on and on. There are loads and loads and loads of components that are required for one to build a holistic understanding of Bitcoin and truly grasp what it is and why it exists in the first place. And if you want to be able to seemingly predict the future, it's the same principle, okay? So similarly to how Bitcoin has all of these components that need to be sewn together to create a holistic overview and understanding, okay? Understanding how to seemingly predict the future is no different, okay? And the only way that one can understand this is to truly understand all of the components. And there's just not enough time, okay? There's just not enough time. Most people are not gonna be open to it. For example, you need to understand God, okay? And most people will fall at the first hurdle. Most people are so sure of themselves, God doesn't exist and well, I don't, I don't care about that, that they're never gonna get past the first hurdle. And you also need to understand things like natural law. You also need to understand things such as how the occult works, the difference between organized religion and the type of religion that occurs higher up, which is structured completely differently. You also need to understand how there is a group of elites, but that elite group is divided, okay? There are actually two groups of elites that have opposing views. You need to understand both of this, what they represent, where they are at battle and what they're both fighting for. You need to understand things like the fact that this construct is indeed a construct. It is a simulated holography. And already I know I'm starting to lose a million people and this is why I don't want to make a bunch of content on it, but it is what it is. There are also things like magic, which again, okay, I know fully well that if you can't even comprehend God exists, then you're already falling off your chair laughing at the fact magic might exist, okay? But it's not the type of Harry Potter magic that comes to mind when you think of magic. Neither is it pulling a rabbit out of a hat. So whilst most people sit there laughing at this arrogantly as if somehow they have all the answers, having done no research, having not even authored their own consciousness, I hope you can understand that whilst I would love to give you the answers, okay, there's just simply not enough time to sit here and focus on all of this stuff and have this channel go in a completely opposite direction to where it needs to be, okay? I am a trader first and foremost. The value in this channel is I can show you what trading looks like in the real world. I can call my positions out ahead of time. I can show you all of my positions. That is where the value is derived from from this channel. So I know a bunch of people want to keep asking things like, well, how do you know, Camel? How can you do this? But the answer is, okay, similarly to Bitcoin, there are all these pockets of knowledge that you need to have so that you can draw a holistic understanding and approach to how the world really works and why it's run this way. For the people that want answers, okay, the answers are there. You have to go on your own journey to find them just like you do to understanding Bitcoin. And like I said, I will give you the hat tip. I will give you the nod when it is time to start actually being concerned. But that time is not yet, as I continuously say over and over again. So in the meantime, I suggest we stick with this base case hypothesis. I suggest that we focus on the charts, okay, because that's what really matters at the moment. So the base case hypothesis is this. 
at the lows, we were far too bearish. We were far, far, far too bearish. The internet's favorite fractal at the time was this 2008 Doom post, okay? Everyone was copying and pasting this from back here and saying, this is what was happening. And I was saying, no, 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 we're going at all time highs in spectacular fashion. Fast forward to today, okay? Are we still operating inside that base case hypothesis and expectation? Yes. So since no major invalidations have occurred, I still think this current cycle low that we're about to find this week is going to result in a near vertical blow off top before ultimately we have a global recession and a deflationary bust. I was also thinking about this over the past few days and I think when the NBER, National Bureau of Economic Research, come out over the next few weeks, we are probably going to see revisions that we may have even entered a recession in June, okay? So right now, consensus is that recession is nowhere near, but I'm pretty sure when that NBER data comes out, we're gonna see that if we weren't in a recession in June, we're probably about to be this month or next month at the latest. And the macro data I'm about to present to you supports that as well. Don't get it twisted. This is not a doom post or a bear call. In fact, it's the complete opposite. I'm calling for a near 30% move to the upside across all stock indexes. I'm calling for six figure Bitcoin all in the next couple of months before ultimately we enter a global recession and a deflationary bust, a collapse of the economy. But first, we are going much, much higher. This was the base case for Bitcoin, okay? That at the lows, again, everyone was expecting a standard shape four year cycle. And I would say, no, 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 we're going to put in an all time high before the halving and ultimately form a left translated cycle top, which would be before November of this year. A lot of people don't like to, <laughs> a lot of people like to make up their own definitions for left translation, but any top before November would qualify it as left translated. And of course, if the top comes sooner in the cycle, that means there is an expectation that the bear market will span more than one year that we are used to seeing for Bitcoin. Most of this idea comes from the fact that we had swung from a highly inflationary environment towards deflation. I've been making the case over and over and over again that anything you do to the M2 rate of change shows up in the US CPI with around an 18 month lag. So since we had a move down and a sideways wobble, we had seen this present a move down in the sideways wobble in the CPI. And I was making the case that the third and final leg down had yet to present. And thus we should be expecting continuation of disinflation before ultimately slipping into asset price deflation. This is again, not a popular idea. There's a whole heap of people that think sticky inflation is here to stay. We were also using the TMC Global Credit Impulse, which leads CPI by around 18 months, again, telling us to expect continuation of disinflation before ultimately a short period of asset price deflation. When we look in on the current CPI data, we are indeed seeing that third and final leg down come in. And the flexible price core CPI is now minus 1.9% year over year amongst the lowest levels ever. So the Fed was late to tighten on the way up and it is now already late to cut on the way back down. The market is gonna to continue to get this wrong, continue to think sticky inflation is a, is a narrative and is here to stay. And I am here to tell you that it is already dealt with. And the real issue we are now facing is that the Fed is already too late to start cutting. We can see that the Fed is too late to start cutting in the next set of data that I'm about to present because the jolts at the hard right edge look falling off of a cliff, okay? Unemployment continues to get worse and worse and worse. You can see this here, the unemployment level in blue, okay? Setting up for one of these big spikes that of course is synonymous with any of the green shaded areas that denote recessions. And again, the issue here is that at the moment, the stance is that they're not gonna support earlier cuts unless the unemployment rate is driven by layoffs. So it sounds like the Fed is not feeling any urgency because of the belief unemployment increase due to labor force expansion is nothing to worry about. But the problem with that is the past recessions all start with labor force expansion and usually only about two quarters into recessions, the layoffs rise sharply. Again, it speaks to the Fed being late to react just like it was late to react on the way up. The below chart shows the decomposition of unemployment in the past recessions. And what's of note here is in the 1970s recession, it was also preceded by a severe labor shortage and huge labor force expansion and payrolls didn't become negative until almost a year after the recession started, which ended up being the deepest post-World War II recession at the time. So whilst the Fed is sitting back and saying everything is fine, okay, we've not seen the increase be driven by layoffs, you can see from the prior data that once again, they are going to be late to react. And again, I am here to tell you it is already too late for them to start cutting and this is further evidenced by the consumers having exhausted their savings. The consumer is in the worst state that it has been in in a very long time. You can see that here exhausted all of the pandemic era savings. As if that's not bad enough, interest payments as a percentage of disposable income spiking like we've seen in prior recessions. Not only that, okay, auto loans in blue at the bottom. Look at this, during the GFC spiking with credit cards. What have we got at the hard right edge? A very similar look. Remember, it is the consumer that drives 
the recessions and the business cycle. Now the CME is currently pricing in over 95% probability that we will be remaining paused at July's meeting, but clicking out to September, you can see there is now around 98% probability that we are going to be seeing cuts in the September's meeting. What's really interesting about this is I've been making the case over and over again that the bond market always knows ahead of time, okay? The bond market in aggregate is very, very good at calling the Fed bluff. Here in green, we've got the US two-year yield and in orange, the Fed funds rate. If we look back at all the prior instances, any time the two-year yield started to nosedive, it led the onset of a Fed cutting cycle shortly thereafter. What's most interesting about this current setup is when we fast forward to today, okay, the US two-year yield is already out here calling a Fed bluff. This is most probably going to be a small counter trend bounce before ultimately a resumption of a move to the downside to sweep these lows. And at that point, we will have been pricing in the Fed cuts way before the CME and your average market participant. So as we can see from this chart, we have already morphed into a look that is something like this, okay, down here where my cursor is. It is not going to be long now before we see the onset of the cutting cycle and I have still continued to caution that we may even see these cuts earlier than September. As I said earlier, based on inflation, unemployment and the state of the consumer, the Fed is already late to cut. And of course, the main reason this is so important to me is because the setup is very similar to the prior three. And each time, once the Fed started cutting rates, okay, once the Fed started cutting rates, once the Fed started cutting rates, we saw huge risk off moments and recessions follow for the stock market. So will this time be different? Whether we get those earlier cuts like I've been expecting or whether we get out to September and then see the first cut, it tells us that the end is nigh for this stock market bull market and we are indeed likely to see a huge crash, a global recession and an economic bust, likely before the end of the year, if not before. So it is indeed a wild time to be alive. The Dixie, we are looking to see whether it can recover from here or roll over. Of course, if it can roll over, we might not yet have found the three-year cycle low and any softening in the dollar could certainly see fuel thrown on the fire for the melt up. When we take a look at the stock market, we are on our way to a daily cycle low. I would think this week we possibly get a counter trend bounce and two drives into it, something like this. And then I'll be talking about moving stops up, adding more exposure in the level three members section and looking to capture what I believe will be the third and final angle. This one has been functioning as a temporary third and final angle, but once we've found this daily cycle low, wherever it forms, that is where we will be looking to set and commit to the final blow off top angle. It's the exact same analysis for the NASDAQ stack so we're probably gonna be looking for a counter trend bounce into resistance one final undercut and then a cycle low and you will see me add exposure here as well and the dow jones we were talking about it set in the second angle and then looking for the third thereafter i would think that this third is coming in over the next week or two and of course we are still holding our russell 2k position from the lows i am similarly expecting some kind of pullback here over the next few sessions followed by the resumption of a rip roaring rally above 2.7k for the russell Gold looks like it has failed its breakout attempt to, and its attempt to confirm an early weekly cycle low, which I'm frankly very happy about because now that means we can get a rollover, something like this, weekly cycle low, and then look to come ripping out of here. So happy days there. Silver should follow in the same type of setup, something like this, cycle low, and then we should be able to get behind that in the member section as well. Bitcoin, as you can see, okay, during this second angle violation, there was a whole heap of people talking about this being invalidated. There's a whole heap of people saying left translated cycle was crazy talk. And I was saying, no, 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 it's the weekly cycle lows that serve as the be all end all and the trend lines are simply early warning signs. Well, now look, okay, we are slowly but surely climbing higher. It was more than expected to be doing something like this and then look for a third and final angle to come in in the not too distant future. I've been saying this fractal makes a lot of sense to me, something like this. And as you can see so far, not too dissimilar from what is going on. So again, a wild time to be alive. Crypto related equities before we've got listed here, plus about eight or nine other ones in the members section are all doing very, very well. And we were using these as a leading indicator to tell us that this indeed was not the top and that third and final angle is just around the corner for Bitcoin. So overall, no invalidations have occurred. The macro backdrop still looks very much conducive to already being in a recession. I think we are going to see that when the MBER actually produce their revised data. That's to be determined. If we're not in a recession as of June or this month, I think we are going to be in the next couple of months. And again, the Fed is always going to be late to react because that is what it does. This whole thing reeks to me of a controlled demolition. And I suspect that is going to continue. The CPI data continues to indicate that indeed inflation is dealt with. Inflation is not only dealt with, but is about to slip into severe disinflation and even deflation. And again, the Fed is going to be late to react with its cuts, not to mention the 
unemployment data is also severely and rapidly deteriorating, again, conducive to seeing these recessions come in in the not too distant future and forcing the Fed to cut no later than September. And of course, that is significant because as I've shown you, if we cut rates in September, it tells us that whether it's two months before, two months after, or sometime in between, we are only reasonable to expect to see the major tops come in for the stock market and risk assets in general, I suspect Bitcoin and crypto as well, within a couple of months of the onset of that cutting cycle. So it's a wild, wild time to be alive. I'm your boy Camel, I hope you're doing well in life. If you're a level three member, look out for the members only video because we've got a whole heap of positions to get behind going into this week. And other than that, I hope you're doing well in life. Have a great weekend. Take care of me, all the best. Cheers, bye.